Um, all right, we'll get started here today. So I'm just going to get on my first screen here. All right, hello and welcome to Great Plains. Uh, Quinn, Friday Focus for Health, Pathways to Safer Opioid Use. This Friday Focus for Health is hosted by the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network, the Centers for Medicare, Medicaid Services, Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization for North Dakota and South Dakota. My name is Stephanie Hansen. I'm a registered nurse and quality improvement advisor for Great Plains Quinn. With me today is Tammy Wagner, Carrie McDermott, and Jennifer Lochner, who will also be speaking today. I want to thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted within one to two business days on our website at greatplainsquin.org under Friday Focus for Health link. Feel free to add any questions to chat and we will address them along with having time at the end for questions. We have added a resource handout that you can access. This resource handout includes all resources shared during today's session and will be available uh, for you and will include today's and the past three weeks of our Friday Focus for Health. In this four week action group series in January, we have learned more about opioid misuse and opioid adverse drug events. We hope that you have found this helpful. Today we will be um, on our final presentation for this four week series, we will focus on substance use disorders, how it can happen to anyone, touch on drug diversion and learn the importance of teach back when interacting with patients and their families. Next slide, please. A uh, substance use disorder is a mental disorder that affects a person's brain and behavior, leading to a person's inability to control their use of substances such as legal or illegal drugs, alcohol, or medications. Symptoms can range from moderate to severe, with addiction being the most severe form of substance use disorders. 6% of Americans over the age of 12 abuse prescriptions in a year. 12% of prescription drug abusers are addicted. And four out of five pharmacy filled prescriptions are opioids. Dr. Melanie Weiss is an optometrist in Watertown, South Dakota. We want to thank her for allowing us to share her personal story on substance abuse disorder. We will now watch a video of her story and journey with substance use disorder. Doctors battle with painkillers is proof of that. In tonight's Eye on Kelly Land, Kelly Polk sits down with Melanie Weiss to find out what happened and where she is today. Melanie Weiss underwent three surgeries in three years time. At first, she took her medication as prescribed, but with the third surgery, she started using a few more pills than she was supposed to. Soon, the medication got the upper hand. She started taking medications from her family members and later writing out prescriptions for others and asking them to fill them for her. And that's not all. It's now unimaginable how Melanie Weiss would feed her addiction at times. I started actually going into other people's homes, and that is still really hard for me to say today. Even though it was, you know, two and a half years ago, it's just so crazy what drugs get your brain to think is okay. That's how this Watertown optometrist ended up in the back of a police car. At about 15 minutes in between my two patients, I walked out of the back door of my clinic, walked down the street, went into somebody's home, took their pain pills, walked out. And when I walked out, the Watertown detectives were standing there waiting for me. Getting caught turned out to be the best thing that could have happened to her. I remember sitting back there just, you know, this is finally over. That's the day Melanie's husband, Paul, got a clear understanding of what was happening. There was um, things that weren't right um, towards the end before she was arrested that we couldn't quite put our finger on. Um, didn't know what was going on. And uh, when I talked to the detective, it was like, getting hit in the head with a shovel, that it all made sense. Melanie fears she wouldn't be alive today 
if it weren't for her arrest in 2016. Doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter what kind of household you grew up in. I grew up in a very loving, normal two-parent middle-class home. I, it doesn't matter how educated you are. None of those things matter. When those drugs grab a hold of you, pretty much say goodbye to your soul. Melanie has since gone through treatment and served time in jail. The suspension on her license ended in January, and she's seen patients again. Tonight, you usually always have an issue with your eyes being dry. Today, Melanie not only spends her time working at her clinic, but also helping others. She started Vision of Hope. Now, to wake up in the morning and think, who can I help today? That's a really good feeling really good. If we can help one person, one person, it'll be worth it because no one should have to go through this. Melanie uses her new platform to educate people, talk about the signs and symptoms of opioid addiction, and offer encouragement to those struggling with the disease. Her advice, don't suffer alone. And I was shameful. Um, you know, if anybody found out that, you know, their local eye doctor had, you know, a prescription drug problem, nobody would come and see me again. That's, that's what I thought at the time. So I kept that to myself. Instead, she wants anyone dealing with addiction to reach out for help. And I see so many people out there that are struggling that don't think that life can ever be normal for them again, that this is just how they're going to live the rest of their life. And if they can just take that one step of asking for help, their life can be good again. She's hoping her own personal journey can be the vision of hope someone needs to take that step. Okay, <laughs> ask, ask as you think of them. Okay. If you're interested in having Melanie speak at a school, a conference, or other event, or if you just want to know more about her story, you can find a link to her website on kelloland.com. If you or someone you know needs help battling an opioid addiction, you can find resources on our opioid crisis page on kelloland.com. Wow, I think I have watched that probably five or six times, and I think every time I get emotional just thinking about her story and so thankful um, that she can share her story to help others. Um, and I thought, what a strong statement by Melanie when she said, when the drugs grab a hold of you, say goodbye to your soul. Wow, um, her story can just happen to anyone. Substance use disorder does not just target a specific individual. She's a doctor, mother, grew up in a great home and well-educated, so we could say she should know better, right? As healthcare providers, we need to start our day and say, who can we help today? We need to increase our awareness to this disease and understand that substance use disorder is a diagnosis like heart disease or diabetes. We need to eliminate the stigma. We need to listen to our patients and really hear them. Taking an extra minute or two can make a difference. We need to have better communication between doctors and nurses and other staff and take time to really, really see our patients. The stigma behind this prevents someone with substance use disorder from reaching out. They feel shameful, as Melanie had said. We don't want them to suffer alone. Like Melanie, she was so thankful when she was sitting in the back seat of that cop car. She needed the help. She wanted the help. She was just too ashamed and felt like life couldn't be normal again. So I want to stop and think how can, how you can help, how we can help, how we can make a difference. Next slide, please. As providers, we can always take that extra minute to listen and show we care. That may be all they need. We have lots of tools for both staff and patients peer support groups, medication treatment centers, pamphlets to hand out with signs of substance use disorder, and can provide Narcan and Narcan training. We will get more in depth on our March Friday Focus for Health on that. 
we will do Narcan training and focus on the MAP programs and the PDMP. So please join us. Registration for that and details will be shared at the end of this session. Next slide, please. I also just want us all to be aware of what drug diversion is, and we will address the harm it can cause to patients in future Friday Focus for Health. Drug diversion is a serious problem that places both patients and nurses at risk. Drug diversion is the deflection of prescription drugs from medical sources into the illegal market. It's against the law to divert drugs. You can go to jail for it. Like in Melanie's case, when she was writing scripts for others to get her medication for her and going into people's homes. The CDC states when prescription medicines are obtained or used illegally, it is called drug diversion. Healthcare providers who steal prescription medicines or controlled substance such as opioids for their own use put patients at risk. Every year, more than a million people end up in the emergency room for taking prescription drugs incorrectly. As we know, drug diversion can be performed by family, friends, neighbors, doctors, clinic staff, a pharmacist, a coworker, or any drug manufacturing companies. The list goes on. It can occur by stealing or buying medications from others. Someone signs or changes a prescription or a nurse that charts they gave a medication but uses it for themselves. Awareness and recognition of drug diversion are first steps to prevention because it's happening in every organization. What a difficult subject with this can be occurring amongst your own coworkers who are close to you. But when you hear Melanie's story, we realize it was a blessing when she was finally caught. It's a terrifying disease and someone with substance use disorder wants help, but they don't know how to end it. We will share, we have a link, we will share a link that describes the prescriber's role in preventing the diversion of prescription drugs. Um, it's a good resource to go into uh, if and when you have time. So before Jennifer talks, I want to leave this with you. Who can you help today that is dealing with substance use disorder or involved with drug diversion? You can make a difference and if you need help, please reach out. Now, Jennifer will talk about teach back training and the role teach back can play in ensuring safer outcomes and understanding among patients and loved ones when it comes to medication use. Jennifer. Thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. um, only 12% of adults in the US have a high level of health literacy, meaning nine out of 10 adults lack the skills needed to fully manage their health care and prevent disease. In addition, 40 to 80% of medical information is forgotten immediately. So how can we improve these numbers? By using the teachback methods. What is teachback? Teachback is a way to make sure you, the healthcare provider, explain information clearly. It is not a quiz to test the patient. It's asking the patient or family member to explain in their own words what they need to know or do in a caring way. It's also a research-based health literacy intervention that promotes adherence, quality, and patient safety. And it's a way to check for understanding and if needed, an opportunity to re-explain and check again. We'll play two short videos demonstrating teach back. This first one you may need to turn your volume up for, and then the second one you might have to turn it back down. Tammy, this is Carrie. I'm not hearing it. You're not. Okay. Uh -uh. I can't either. Do you have yours pulled up then? I do. Okay, just give me a second to make sure this is going to work as it should. Oh, shoot. Forgot to do a sound. Sorry, Tammy. That's all right. Thank you. I, it was. Actually, I could hear it this time. <laughs> you could hear it? I could hear it. It was very soft, but yes. Okay, so we'll try this. It's like, now that you know this, I know you've got friends. When they ask about this issue, how are you going to tell them? What are you going to say? 
One of the things that you can do if you have a really bad pain, I mean, where you can't mm -hmm. stand on mm -hmm. it and it's, it's really getting in your way, is to use what I call, this is my little pain protocol here. It has ibuprofen, which decreases those little cells I was talking to you about, the yeah. inflamed part, and your Tylenol that just works on the pain. Yeah. And the I is for ibuprofen and T is for Tylenol. And this just shows you how to do it over the course of the day. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's an I, so you use ibuprofen. Right. Because you have to have something yeah. on your stomach That's right. with that one. Because yeah. this one will irritate your stomach. Yeah. So in between meals and at bedtime, you use a Tylenol. Right. This way you get something every three hours. Right. You don't overdose on either one. So it's I-T, I-T, I-T. And yeah. if you do that for a couple of days when it's really bad, yeah. then you can just go back to your regular regimen. But this mm -hmm. usually breaks the pain pretty yeah. nicely. So I know you have a lot of friends with arthritis. How would you explain it to them? Well, uh, for breakfast, I take I. 10 a.m., I take T. Lunch, I take I. 3 p.m., I take T. I at dinner and T at bedtime. Is that correct, That's Doctor? That's going to work just fine. Thank you very much. All right, I'll stop sharing, Tammy. Jennifer, you want the second one right now? Yeah, please, and then I'll talk after. You bet. I can't hear it. Can't hear it? No. Did you include the sound before you shared it? If, if you don't have it, Tammy, I do. I'm okay. I wanted to talk to you about your pain. Okay. I know your leg pain's been an issue, and that's one of the reasons why you're here. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to come up with a realistic plan, like, of how we can manage your pain better. Okay. So what's worked for you in the past? You know, I've taken multiple things like Dilaudid, Narco, and Morphine. Okay, and what, what worked the best for your pain? The lauded. Okay, so I'll look in your chart and look at the doses that you've mm -hmm. taken in the past. So we might, we might not be able to get rid of 100% of your pain. Okay. Um, because that might require too high a dose. But what would be a realistic goal? You know, a goal that you would be comfortable with under, like on that scale of mm -hmm. 1 to 10? You know, I'm at a 7 right now, so maybe about a 4. Okay. All right, so we'll partner with you mm -hmm. and we'll try and keep your pain at either a four or below. Okay. So your role in that would be not to let your pain level get too high before you call us. Okay. Okay. So if your pain starts to creep up, use your call bell yeah, and I'll let use... us know. Okay. And if you're due for something, we'll get you something. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. But have you tried any alternative methods for pain like management? What? Like massage or aromatherapy or... No. Or but just... I would love that hot and cold packs maybe never tried it okay so we can look at some of those two and see if that could be helpful are okay. you interested yeah for yeah. sure okay yeah. so i'll call the urban zen um, people and see if we can get a visit okay, okay yeah that sounds good great so this is really a partnership and mm -hmm. and um so I, just so that i know that i did a good job kind of discussing this with you what are you going to do when your pain starts to creep up so i'll be using the call light to call you if i'm even near a four going okay. up Okay, because that's our goal. Right. Right. We want to keep you at a four or below. Right. All right, great. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. okay, so what I liked about both those videos is the first one, um, the provider kind of went through and then had him explain how he would explain it to someone, not just asking, okay, what are you going to do? Um, how would you explain this to your friends with arthritis? So I just thought that was a, a good way to do that teach back. And then in the second video, um, just offering those alternatives. And sometimes you might think people know about those alternatives, but don't or never even thought that that would help with pain. So just having those options are, I thought they were really good um, examples to use. So 
On this slide, I have a picture of Ask Me 3. Ask Me 3 has three important questions to ask when you're with your provider to help you understand what your plan is going to be. So with Ask Me 3, it asks, what is my problem? What is my main problem? What do I need to do? And why is it important for me to do this? Um, for the provider, when prescribing opioids, it's important to focus on what the risks of taking opioids are and teaching them what to watch for and also teaching the alternatives that they can use. So hopefully they won't need to use those opioids as often. Um, we'll have a link for a video that shows how Ask Me 3 works on, on our resource handout. And I think it's a good video because the patient gets some unexpected news, which can make it really difficult for them to focus when that provider ex is explaining um, what the plan is going to be and what's going on. So um, just having that Ask Me 3 is a really good resource. Next slide. So by now you should have pulled together your team. You should have also collected and analyzed your data. Define your problem after looking at your data and worked to improve it. And now you want to come up with your action plan. Next slide. So this is the time now that you can ask questions. It's a safe sharing environment. So if you would like to share anything or talk in the chat, um, feel free to. You can come off mute. And um, just to start off with, are any of you using the teach back method in your hospitals, clinics, or nursing homes? And just answer a yes or no. I'm launching the poll right now. Okay. So, everybody have yes, no, or not sure. And if you don't see the poll, if you click on the chat um, icon at the top of your screen, it should populate for you in the chat box or it will be on your main screen. We're still getting a few responses, so we appreciate you. This helps us. Right now it's looking, let's see, about. Oh, wait. Got another response. If anybody else wants to put their response in, it is anonymous. We have about 69% that do use teach back in their organization, which is awesome. Yes. And about 7% that do not and 21% that aren't sure. So thank you guys again for that. Thanks. For those of you that said yes, would you please share how your organization communicated or educated to your staff on how to use TeachBack? How about someone out there? Someone <laughs> out there, please. Or how about if you've gone for an appointment yourself to see your provider? Have has your provider done teach back with you? This is Carrie. I guess I have one experience where someone used teach back with me. My son had hernia hernia surgery. He was little, maybe like five. And I remember they were going over the medications with my husband and I and we're like nodding. And then they paused and she said, can you now repeat when you go home what your you know protocol is? And we both just stumbled. <laughs> but it was helpful because she made us articulate his plan. Um, and anyway, it and that is my only, I think, experience truly using that method. This is Lori and um, I absolutely um, witnessed this when my mom was um, being treated for COVID and um, she was really pretty sick, but um, her provider absolutely re, um, used teach back as because my mom's not very good about coming back and letting them know what's going on. And so she definitely use teach back skills with my mom. And so that was, I was 
really happy to, to see that. <laughs> Great. How about Ask Me Three? Have any of you heard of Ask Me Three before? Do you want me to put a poll in? Sure. All right. So maybe we showed something new today. I don't know. Ah. New poll. It's a common here. The I think Lori said that uh, she thought that Ask Me poster would be really good at clinics and in the patients' rooms. So that's great to hear if anybody can utilize that and use it as a takeaway. I know our facility, um, we gave it to, we gave a pamphlet to our patients when we admitted them, and I believe they got it in the clinic too. Right, they're coming in. Six responses. Keep keep responding. <laughs> Still coming in. This is great. Okay, so we have 36% have heard or used Ask Me Three, and 64% said no. And just letting you know, it is 27 after, but we have about one minute. Okay. This is Lori. I'm just going to add one more thing on the ask me. I didn't really know it was ask me, but again, back with my mom, seeing another physician, um, prior to us going to see this um, specialist, I said, mom, what is the main problem? What are you going for? Because, you know, she's not the only one that can get off like I can too. Like there's a lot of things wrong with me, <laughs> but I can't be treat. you know, then I, the, the provider gets off on what's what is her issue here? What's the main problem? So I had my mom repeat it to me. What are we going to talk about today? <laughs> and um, the visit went pretty good then. <laughs> yeah, it's just preparing for those visits make it a lot easier too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess just because of time here, um, as a reminder, our Friday Focus for Health topics will be changing for February. We will be discussing how to reduce avoidable hospital ED visits from 12 to 12.30. And from 12.30 to 1, we will be discussing blood pressure control. You can register for this series by using the link, which you will find in the chat. Next slide. And here is the QR code that you can use and let us know how we did or click on the link and complete the evaluation. So thank you so much for attending. Being mindful of your time, we will be ending for today. If you registered for the Friday Focus for Health, immediately following this one, you will, be, you will leave this meeting and use the Teams link in your calendar invite. At the conclusion, Attendees will be dropped off at our quick webinar evaluation. Please complete to help us plan and coordinate future events. Thank you again for joining us. Enjoy your day. Bye. Thank Thanks, you, guys.